Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review. Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here, meeting my icon Catherine Isabel here. Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of AMC Survival Sunday, the season 8 finale of The Walking Dead, which was called Wrath, and then the season 4 premiere of Fear of the Walking Dead, which is called What's Your Story? So yeah, this is also screening at select theaters uh, around the country as uh, you know with a fathom event and uh, luckily my local theater that i always go to happened to be playing it so i attended and i watched uh, the walking dead on the big screen which is uh, you know pretty cool um uh, because i've you know the walking dead's one of my all-time favorite shows i know i've been kind of spotty with my reviews for it this season but just the matter of fact is that it still is for damn sure um it's still probably within my top three favorites honestly um and uh, I think season 8 has actually been pretty good. I think especially the last couple episodes before this one have been really good. Um, I think it's at its best since uh, season 5. Um, and I really like Negan's development. You know, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I, oh, I got a Walking Dead shirt on right now. <laughs> um, but Jeffrey Dean Morgan, he's one of my favorite actors. And I, I loved him on Supernatural and you know, a bunch of other stuff, of course. Watchmen and other things. Um, you know, I really like what they've been doing with Negan this season. And especially the last in this uh, back half of season eight uh i think it's been really nicely fleshed out pretty close to his comic uh book counterpart and i know some people they want it more s simple cut and dry oh, yeah, just kill negan please that i just think some people honestly you know maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong I, people can have different opinions but i honestly think some more casual fans are seeing negan more black and white than they should be um, I, I think they've done a really good job of showing the layers to the character, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan is a, an excellent actor. Um, and I think they've been doing wonders with him. Um, so I'm actually glad they kind of went the way of the comics in the uh, Season 8 finale here. Um, but before we get more into the episodes, um, and of course another big thing about this was, you know, of course Morgan, Neil, you know, Lenny James crossing over into Fear of the Walking Dead. And I think this is kind of part of a bigger plan they're going to have. I think they may do a, an even bigger crossover again at some point. Um, they'll maybe merge both shows or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's definitely uh, you know, a seed planted for any more to come from something like this. Um, but yeah, because I went to a screening of it at a theater, um, they actually handed out uh, posters for Survival Sunday, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I really love the look of this poster, actually. I don't really have any more space on my wall, but I'm going to find a spot for it. I got my uh, sort of Season 3, 4 Rick and Michonne poster, kind of like right there. <laughs> um, so I'm probably going to throw it under that or something. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I really like the coloring. It really pops. Um, what is a little bit confusing is that uh, it has like the Fear of the Walking Dead characters on the Walking Dead side of things, and then our Walking Dead characters on the Fear of the Walking Dead side, but I don't know, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but I really like Rick there, you know, Survival Sunday, of course I got Madison, I kind of wish she wasn't as prominent, and it's odd like Negan's on the poster, and you think he'd be like there or something, I don't know. Um, but still I think it looks really cool, I especially like Alicia and uh, Morgan right there. Um, of course, Alicia Debenham Carey, I've you know, loved her since the 100, and I like her in anything, even friend request. <laughs> and I really loved how they developed Alicia in Season 3 of Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, so I really like uh, those two there. Um, of course, you got Carol and Michonne, as well as Maggie. And you got Daryl. Of course, you got the walkers at the bottom. I just think it looks really, really cool. 
Um, so that was nice. That was a nice little surprise. Um, but yeah, so uh, the season 8 finale of The Walking Dead, uh, I thought it was pretty good. You know, it, it was a very uh, kind of, uh, I don't know if I want to say expected, but uh, you know, kind of uh, fitting, I should say, payoff, you know, for what they've been building to all season, you know, with uh, Carl's letter. Um, you know, and, you know, this whole thing about, you know, mercy and there having to be something after, you know, that theme definitely played really strongly into the finale here. I know a lot of people are still upset over Carl's death, but I honestly am still on the side of it. I think it makes the show more interesting, more unpredictable for everyone. Um, and I think, you know, just with the emotion and everything, it's been used pretty well. Um... Yeah, so that played into it here. I really like the I really like the feel, but you know, it felt like re really something is happening. You know, you had this big open field, um, and it really felt like there's uh, you know some serious shit going down. Some uh, you know, you know, probably the biggest uh, in terms of numbers you know fight that we've had on The Walking Dead, um, and most of it was pretty good. Although, uh, you know, I was watching at a th at a theater, so there were no commercials, which was really nice for The Walking Dead for a change. Um, I don't know if it's because there are no commercials, but somehow it still, you know, somehow felt, uh, I don't know, a little bit too fast, a little bit too, uh, rushed, I don't know. Uh, I was almost expecting more fights in this, more kind of, uh, shootouts and stuff like that, but there really wasn't as much of it as I was expecting, which is kind of odd. Um, it felt like it kind of got to the Rick and Negan confrontation a little bit quick, and even that was kind of over in about a minute. I, I don't know. Um, you know, I still think my favorite sort of, like, a uh, battle episode is probably, like, Too Far Gone, which might still be my all-time favorite episode of the show. Um, but this is still, you know, it's still good for what it was, and, uh, Rick and Egan's moment that they did have I thought was pretty good. Um, Rick actually choosing to, uh, you know, tell Negan that they're, you know, they, they, now, well, not that they can make peace, but that they're, they have to, ugh, they can't talk, <laughs> that they have to have something after, and, you know, reminding of Carl, that actually getting Negan to uh, hesitate and hold back, you know, giving him 10 seconds, but you could tell Negan was actually getting kind of, uh, you know, cracked over that, you know, hearing about Carl. Um, and that allowed, Rick, uh, that allowed Rick to cut his throat. Um, and I've seen some people in the theater, they thought that was like, oh, you know, slit his throat, you know, Negan's dead. Um, that's really kind of the way it went down in the comics, too, at least in terms of how Rick... Uh, he you know, basically uh, disables Negan. <laughs> um, so I thought Jeffrey Dean Morgan was really good in that scene when he was, you know, kind of, you know, holding himself back from swinging Lucille and stuff like that. Um, so that was a pretty good moment. Um, then they have, uh, they have uh, the whole thing set up because of Eugene. You know, they're being lured into a trap because of Negan knowing Dwight was the mole, giving him false information to lure Rick, uh, Rick into the trap. Um, but, uh, Eugene finally, you know, doing the right thing and, uh, you know, screwing with the, uh, or sabotaging the bullets that he had made. Um, of course, you know, probably, uh, doing it right with, uh, the one Negan tested, but, you know, kind of screwing him over with the rest of them that, you know, they mass-produced. Um, you know, so, it, you know, just, uh, you know, wrecks quite a few people's hands when they try and fire them. Um, and this gives, uh, you know, Rick and the others quite a big advantage, so they're able to round up the others, and they're choosing to, uh, you know, take them and capture them, not kill them all. Um, and then when you have Maggie and the others get to Rick and Negan, you know, Rick says that, you know, they're gonna tend to him, they're gonna spare him, and, you know, show him that there has to be more after. And Maggie doesn't take that too kindly, which is kind of expected. Um, you know, so I thought that was actually a pretty well acted moment there, too. And of course, we finally see the whole moment of uh, Rick, you know, saying, "My mercy prevailed over my wrath," um, which again was a really, a really good scene, well acted scene by Andrew Lincoln, of course. But felt a little bit sped over because even that scene, I thought they could have added a couple extra minutes just to kind of sit there with Rick. I don't know, because um, it was like a twenty-second moment. I don't know. <laughs> um, oops. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Another thing that stuck out about this episode was the moment we had with um, Maggie, Daryl, and Jesus, surprisingly, you know, towards the end. Um, you know, they all apparently disagree that Rick was wrong to spare Negan, which, okay, is one thing, um, but Daryl had actually let Dwight go earlier, so it's kind of odd. Um, and it's odd that Jesus isn't on this, too. 
Uh, because, you know, he was only going to try and do as far as my lives as he can, trying to stop Morgan every chance he got. Um, but yet, yeah, he's in on this too, apparently, thinking they all need to, you know, Negan needs to die. Um, you know, which I understand it from Maggie's perspective, okay. Um, but Dwight, um, Daryl's being kind of a bit contradicting right now. <laughs> um, and not just that, but the way they say it, Rick was wrong, Rick and Michonne are both wrong, they need to pay, they need to learn. Um, we'll bide our time. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Honestly, that felt a little bit weird. Like, they're, what are they gonna do? Uh, are they just not gonna try to kill Negan? Are they gonna try and, like, punish Rick and Michonne somehow? Um, and show them, or, you know, try to kill them or something? I wouldn't think they'd try to kill them, but the way they said it, it's like they're trying to punish them somehow eventually when they get the chance. That's kind of, <laughs> that's really, really shady, to say the least. Um... It feels a little out of character for all of them, maybe. Um, but either way, it just makes Maggie frustrating. I was just starting to like Maggie more than ever. <laughs> Again, I understand her grieving her wanting Negan dead, but just the way they're, they're apparently trying to set up Rick and Michonne, it feels just, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't really know where they're going with that. Um, I don't know if it has to do with uh, Lauren Cohen's contract. You know, I, apparently she still hasn't re-signed with the show, so I don't know. Maybe they're going to have her try and do something and get herself killed. <laughs> Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I know there's some division between Rick and, uh, Maggie in the comics. They do disagree over how to handle some things eventually after this time jump. Um, but, yeah, it, it seems a little bit much, a little bit harsh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's still pretty good. You know, again, it wasn't kind of, uh, as action and, uh, sort of, like, intense, intensity heavy as I was expecting. I thought it could have been a little bit more for being all at war. Um, but still, there's definitely character moments in it that I liked, um, and I'm definitely, uh, ready for the next season. Like I said, Walking Dead's one of my all-time favorite shows, and it was a really cool experience watching it in theaters. And now I guess we can talk about, uh, Fear the Walking Dead Season 4 premiere. I'm really gonna try and, uh, review each episode this season if I can. Of course, Morgan, you know, he ends up leaving. Um, you know, we see the opening, we see Andrew, Andrew Lincoln, you know, Rick, uh, Carol, and, you know, Jesus all trying to talk to him, you know, he's, uh... He set himself up at the junkyard, you know, telling Jadis that Rick had wanted to go join the community, which is, you know, nice of him after he had, you know, shot her off <laughs> the last time they had seen each other. Um, but Morgan, he ends up leaving, um, because they found a way, Rick's found a way to make peace and try and be someone like that again, but Morgan just can't, so he goes off on his own. He doesn't want to get attached to people. Excuse me, but he ends up meeting, uh, I forget her name on the show already. Um... Let's see. I'm just trying to find her name right now. Okay, yeah, Ma she's played by Maggie Grace, I know that, yeah. Althea, um, I'm probably butchering her name. Um, we see him meet up with her as well as, uh, Garrett Delahunt's, uh, John, who's kind of like this old-school gunslinger type of survivor. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a little bit comical. I think he's actually a pretty cool character so far. Um, he's been on a lot of shows, you know, Burn Notice, he was on The Gifted in the first season, he's done tons of stuff. At one point, it was even thought that he was considered for the role of Negan, so that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I think he's actually a cool new addition to Fear, and, uh, Morgan being on Fear definitely, uh, you know, brings more attention to it. I'm hoping with, like, this screening that it, you know, maybe it boosts fear in the ratings a little bit. Um, I know some people are upset that they've time-jumped fear at all to catch up with it because they like fear being said in the past. Although they kind of, uh, they kind of lost that after the first season anyway, so might as well just bring it in for more character opportunities, I guess. Um, but yeah, I like this premiere of fear, you know, it was very, it was shot, there wasn't a lot of color, um, which I think was on purpose, it felt very empty. Um, there aren't a lot of people around here, as Maggie Grace, Grace says, there aren't many around these parts. Um, they encounter some less than savory characters after Morgan meets up with, uh, Garrett Dale Hunt's John. Um, you know, they end up, uh, in a, you know, pretty good, you know, couple fight scenes. Uh, you know, I thought Morgan jumping on the roofs and stuff like that around this little kind of, uh, mobile home area. I don't know, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting kind of late. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it, you know, it's definitely a good, ha you know, seeing, or different seeing it from Morgan's perspective. Um, and I think, you know, depending on what kind of, uh, ideology he's taken on for himself, I think he's gonna make a really interesting addition for Fear. 
Um, and it appears like he's trying not to kill anyone at this point, um, unless he absolutely has to. So, you know, maybe he's kind of, you know, taking some, maybe he's trying to steer himself back the right way after all, I don't know. Um, but we don't see any of the other Fear of the Walking Dead characters until the very end. Um, it was great seeing Alicia Devon and Carrie pop up though on the road, sending them up to, you know, take, you know, to, uh, ambush them, you know, with, uh, Nick Strand and, uh, Luciano and everything. Um, so that was a cool moment because, uh, yeah, like I said, Alicia Devon and Carrie's my favorite from the show. Um, so I like all that. Um, you know, not much more to go into detail, but I do like Maggie Grace's character. Um, you know, she's this journalist and she's, like, trying to chronicle, like, every survivor she encounters, you know, you know, and uh, hear their stories and record them, which is kind of odd. Um, but I think she's definitely playing it well. Um, you know, and seeing Morgan sort of uh, not reminisce, but you know, talk about you know the good people he had known and how there's a fight and he lost a lot of good people and stuff like that, and how he uh, you know he loses people and he loses himself, as he said. Um, you know, it's just cool to you know it, it was part of the crossover, just hearing about you know Rick and the others, you know, sort of indirectly. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think it's kind of leading to a bigger crossover at some point down the road. Um, but yeah, you know, it's really more of like a, an aftermath of the Walking Dead finale. Uh, finale. Finale. <laughs> finale. It didn't really feel as much like a Fear of the Walking Dead episode, because like I said, we didn't see others until the very end, which was a cool moment, by the way, like I said. Um, but I think it'll be even more interesting next week. Um, but yeah, so overall, the Walking Dead Season 8 finale, it... You know, it wasn't quite as good as I thought it was going to be, but I'm still giving it about a, you know, around a 9, 9.2 out of 10. Um, and then the Fear of the Walking Dead premiere, what's your story? I'm giving about an 8.8, 8.9 out of 10. Uh, so yeah, let me guys thought about Survival Sunday. Did you go see it in the theater if you could, or did you just watch it at home? What do you think is ahead for the Fear of the Walking Dead Season 4? Um, you know, and with a Season 8 finale, all of a sudden Egan, you know, in the bed, and I'm saying they're, he's going to be there to watch as they rebuild, and he's just going to rot here, where they're not going to kill him or anything, but he's going to see what they do. So, yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.